Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here, uh, and in today's video, we're going to be talking through the Week 6 Monday Night Football Showdown slate on DraftKings. We have a very exciting uh, Monday Night game this week. I think this is probably the best, that, or I think this is going to be the best primetime game we've had all season. We got a game between the Cowboys and the Chargers, 51 total in this game, so it's expected to be kind of a higher scoring game. I think we do have some shootout potential in this one. The Chargers, or excuse me, the Cowboys are favored by one and a half, so we got a really close spread. High total game. Um, I'm excited for this one. We got a fun showdown slate to talk about, guys. As always, we're going to go uh, top to bottom. We're going to talk about all the playable options on this showdown slate, just kind of work our way down, hit on all the guys I do have interest in. Now, uh, before we get started with the breakdown, if you guys do enjoy uh, these DFS videos, if they do help you out, please hit that like button down below. I always do appreciate the likes, guys. And make sure to hit that subscribe button as well if you have not yet. Also, if you're new to the channel, uh, be sure to check out the sponsor of this video, Price Picks. So, uh, Price Picks is a player prop site. It's a DFS site, but they're they're more focused on player props. So, on Price Picks, you're just picking more or less on a player's projection. It is that simple. You're not having to compete against other players. You're not really building out lineups like you do on DraftKings and FanDuel and those sites. On Price Picks, it's just you versus their projections. So, you can see some of the props they already have posted. Uh, for Monday night's game, I'm making this video on Sunday afternoon, so you can see they still have stuff up for Sunday night football. Uh, but they have stuff up for Monday night as well. You can see all the props they have available. And again, very simple, very easy to use on prize picks. You're just picking more or less on a player's projection. It's that simple. Um, if you guys don't have an account on prize picks yet, you can sign up. You can use promo code NOAH. And when you do sign up for prize picks with my promo code, you will get your first deposit matched up to $100. So be sure to check them out if you have not yet and use that promo code. Uh, when you do sign up. But let's go ahead and talk about this showdown slate. We're going to start off at the top of the player pool. Uh, we'll hit on the quarterbacks first, and then we'll just kind of talk about the the top other top tier options. But looking at the quarterbacks first, you have Justin Herbert, second most expensive option on the slate, coming in at 10800 And then you have Dak Prescott as the fourth most expensive option on the slate at 10 k You know, in a game with a 51 total, I think it's going to be, you're going to see both quarterbacks project pretty well here. Herbert, obviously, has been really good for fantasy this season, has shown a very, very high floor, at least 20 drafting points in all four of his games this season. This Chargers team has been a very pass-heavy offense. They're getting Austin Eckler back for this game, so maybe they'll lean a little bit more on the running game, but honestly, getting Eckler back is probably a boost for their passing game as well because Eckler is such a good pass catcher. So we can expect Herbert to drop back probably you know 30 plus 35 times. I mean, he might even throw the ball 40 times, especially if game script forces him to. I don't think that will that'll be the case, but the volume on the you know in the passing game is great for Herbert. He has plenty of weapons in this Chargers team uh, in this Chargers offense. Herbert does have a little bit of rushing upside. You're not going to get a ton of rushing upside from him, but like we last week we did see him get two rushing touchdowns. I mean he already he has already had three rushing touchdowns this season, so he can you know obviously get it done through the air, but he's also been kind of adding with his legs as well. Herbert I think is a very safe high floor option, probably someone you're going to want to be playing in cash games. And then Dak Prescott at 10K has been pretty underwhelming this season from a fantasy perspective. He has yet to top 20 drafting points in any game so far. I feel like if there was ever a game for Dak to finally kind of pop off and put up 20 plus fantasy points, like this would be the game for that to happen. High total game, shootout, indoors. Um, plus, this is a really good matchup. I know the Chargers have given up a lot of fantasy points to the quarterback position this season. So definitely like Dak Prescott here. Feel a little bit better about Herbert if I had to choose between one of the two quarterbacks. But in cash games, I think both quarterbacks give you a very safe high floor here. I think both have a ceiling as well. Now, would I be playing the quarterbacks in the captain spot? I don't think so. I think this is a slate where I would be a lot more likely to play some of these running backs and receivers in the captain spot. Because I think, especially with DraftKings PPR scoring system, getting you know, the 100-yard bonus and stuff like that, I think it makes more sense to play the running backs and receivers in the captain spot. But in the flex spot, especially you know, for cash games, like I think Dak and, and Herbert both look really good here. And if you're building out any lineups where you're playing a receiver at captain, I think obviously it makes sense to you know have the quarterback in those lineups as well. It's it's not a must, but most of the time when a when a receiver winds up being the winning captain, typically the quarterback is going to be in those lineups as well. Now let's talk about some of these other top tier options. So Austin Eckler is going to be making his return for this game. Um, did not play since week one. He did play week one, but hasn't played since then. Coming off a bye, I expect Austin Eckler to be pretty much full go here. Um, he was a full participant in practice all week. They're, you know, obviously they're coming off their bye week, so he has had plenty of time to rest up. He dealt with an ankle injury, but I'm expecting Eckler to be back to 100%. And we saw in week one when Eckler was healthy, he got 20 touches, 
16 carries for 117 yards in that game against Miami. Also had uh, five targets, four catches for 47 yards. Eckler has been one of the best fantasy running backs just the last few seasons. He's a great pass catcher uh, on DraftKings with the scoring being full PPR. Eckler is able to rack up a lot of fantasy points on DraftKings because he can catch so many balls. He's the most expensive player on the slate, but I think for good reason. Um, in cash games, I think it makes more sense to play the quarterbacks, but for tournaments, obviously Eckler is a really good option here. The matchup against this Cowboys defense, I don't think it's like the best, but Eckler's just going to get all the volume. He's going to get usage both on the ground and in the passing game. There's really nothing negative to say about him here. Um, I, I would expect him to continue you know, right where he left off week one. I, I would expect another you know, pretty good performance from Eckler. And then you have Keenan Allen at 10,600, who I think also looks pretty good here. Not a ton of negatives you can say about Keenan Allen this season. I mean, he's been a target monster, getting a ton of volume. And without Mike Williams, with Mike Williams done for the season, we should expect Allen to continue to be a top target for Justin Herbert. Now, with Austin, uh, Eckler coming back, maybe Keenan Allen you know, projects to see a few less targets, but I think double-digit targets is still in his range of outcomes. And, you know, the matchup against the Cowboys, I think, is fine. I know the Cowboys did lose Trayvon Diggs. I'm pretty sure Diggs is out for the rest of the season. So they're going to be missing their top corner. This is a matchup that Keenan Allen can definitely succeed in. And the volume is just going to be so good without Mike Williams in a pass-heavy offense. Really nothing negative you can say about Keenan Allen either. Um, I think him and Austin Eckler both look like really good tournament plays. Again, I think I'd play the quarterbacks in cash games first. I would prioritize the quarterbacks. I would prioritize the floor that the quarterbacks give you in cash games. But... Yeah, for tournaments, can't go wrong with either one of Eckler or Keenan Allen. And then you have Tony Pollard at 9,600. Tony Pollard has been a little bit underwhelming this season um, for his standards, I guess you could say, because he's always been such a good fantasy running back. And we've seen without Ezekiel Elliott, like Pollard has always shown the upside to be a true bell cow workhorse back. With Elliott not on the team anymore, this is clearly Pollard's backfield, and he's going to see a large majority of the opportunity in this Cowboys backfield. But if you look at his game log this season, it's kind of, you have to take some notes here. So week one against the Giants, he had a good game, but he also lost touches because they won 40 to nothing. He didn't even play the whole game. Week two against the Jets was pretty much the same scenario, but he still got 32 touches in that game. Um, had a really good game. Week three against Arizona has been like the one game this season where Pollard played a normal amount of snaps. He played 86% of the snaps in week three against Arizona. That game against New England, another blowout win. Didn't even get a full workload. And then last week, they got blown out. It was the opposite way. The Cowboys got blown out in that game. Pollard did not get a full workload in that game. So we've really only seen Pollard have a full workload in, in really one game this season. I guess technically two if you count this Jets game because um, he did get 32 touches in that game. But he got 26 touches in that game against Arizona. Played 86% of the snaps. If this is a competitive game, which the one and a half spread indicate it sh indicates it should be, we're going to see Pollard probably play like 70, 80% of the snaps. I mean, he's going to be a workhorse back this season. He's a guy that is explosive on the ground. He's also a really good pass catcher. He does you know, everything that Austin Eckler does, um, and he's cheaper. So I think at 9,600, Tony Pollard looks really good here. I have a lot of interest in Pollard on the slate. The matchup against the Chargers, I, I think, is okay. The Chargers have been better against the run this season. They were really bad against the run last season. They've been better this year. But I still think with the, the volume he's going to get, just with them, the amount of touches he projects to see here, Pollard at 9,600 is a really strong option to me. And then you have CeeDee Lamb coming in at 9K. CeeDee Lamb is going to be you know a top target for Dak Prescott. We know that. He's going to project to see probably you know eight to nine targets, if not more, on a weekly basis. Lamb has been a little bit underwhelming this season, but I think a lot, you know, that could be due to just the fact that Dak's kind of also been a little bit underwhelming from a fantasy perspective. So Dak not having really many good fantasy games has resulted in C.D. Lamb not having many good fantasy games. Plus, these blowouts have not really helped either. You know, they got blown out last week. They blew out New England. Um, the game against the Giants, they blew them out. This is a game where I think we finally see C.D. Lamb, you know, put up a not, I don't want to say a ceiling game, but I would not, you know, I would not be surprised to see like 100 plus yards from CeeDee Lamb here. Um, I think he's more of a tournament play in cash games. I would prioritize the quarterbacks. I think I would prioritize uh, Pollard and the running backs over Lamb. But man, for tournaments, I have no issue going to CeeDee Lamb at 9K. Um, clearly, the upside is there, and in a really good matchup, great game environment, high total game. Again, I would not be surprised if this is a spot where you finally see CeeDee Lamb kind of break out. Um, then you have Josh Palmer at 7K who I think is a you know, decent option here in the mid-range. He is closely priced enough to guys like Lamb and some of these other guys we talked about that I would rather get up to those guys if I can. I think if, Pal I think if Palmer was like, 
I want to say like 6K or like 55, 5600. Like I think Palmer would look a lot more appealing if he was kind of, uh, you know, $1,000 cheaper. He's kind of priced in like no man's land where he's expensive enough to where I don't want to, I would rather get up to the guys priced above him. He's also not cheap enough to where like, I feel like he's a priority. So Palmer is in play, but I think he's more of like a tournament play. He is going to have a good role. He is going to be the wide receiver too with Mike Williams out. He's going to play on a large majority of the snaps. Uh, last week without Mike Williams, you saw Josh Palmer lead the team in snaps. 86% of the snaps last week got eight targets. Not a great game, but the volume was there. The opportunity was there. That's what you really want to bank on. Um, he is questionable heading into this game, but I don't think this is a, a question mark that's too serious. I'm pretty sure he was a full participant in practice all week, and then I think he just kind of popped up on the injury report. I would expect Palmer to play. If he does play, he's firmly in play on the slate, but definitely not a priority for me at his price tag. Um, then you have Josh Kelly at 6,400, who's pretty much out of play. Now that Austin Eckler's back, I have zero interest in Kelly at that price tag with Eckler back. Now we can talk about some of the value on the slate. We obviously know there's a lot of great payup options. We've already talked about all these great payup options. Well, now we got to try and find some cheap options to fit these guys in. So you have Brandon Cooks at 5,400, who's been operating as the wide receiver three for the Cowboys, just in terms of snaps. Now, if you look at the targets, he has seen at least four targets in every single game this season. But when it comes to the snaps, he's been playing about 60 to 80% of the snaps, somewhere in that range. Most weeks, I would say 60 to 70% is what we can project for Cooks. Cook is, uh, Cooks is mainly going to play, like, I'm pretty sure he mainly plays in the slot, um, but he'll still probably project to see, like, four to six targets. At 5,400, I think Cooks is expensive enough to where he's definitely not a top value play for me, but he's at least viable. We do know that Brandon Cooks has some big play upside. Now, we haven't seen it yet this season. He hasn't really flashed much upside this so far this season, and at this point in his career, he might just be washed, but he's going to be on the field for 60, 70% of the snaps. He's going to be out there running routes. It's a good matchup. It's a good game environment. Cooks is fine. Definitely not a priority, though, at his price tag. Jake Ferguson, going to operate as the number one tight end for the Cowboys. He's been getting you know consistent volume pretty much on a weekly basis, at least seven targets in three out of their five games this season. I'm, I'm pretty sure he actually leads the league in end zone target or red zone targets. They've been targeting Ferguson a lot in the red zone when they get down near the goal line. Ferguson is a big body tight end that you know can get those red zone targets, can bring those in for touchdowns. At this price tag of 5200 he's pretty much touchdown or bust. I, I think it's pretty hard for Ferguson to pay off this price tag without scoring a touchdown. Now, he did have seven catches for 77 yards week four against New England. He could have that type of game, but I think that type of game is pretty unlikely for a guy like Ferguson. So as a touchdown or bust play, he's fine, but definitely not a priority at 5200 And then you got the kickers. Uh, 5K, 4,600, or 4,400. Both kickers are in play here in a game that should have a lot of points scored in it. You know, you think you would think the kickers probably project to see, or they probably project for at least like eight fantasy points a piece. Um, again, kickers don't give you a huge ceiling, but the floor on kickers is always pretty solid. The kickers are fine to go to if you want to go there for value. Gerald Everett at 4,600 is going to operate as the number one tight end for the Chargers, but that doesn't, you know, that hasn't resulted in much in terms of a in terms of opportunity for fantasy, he's just not really getting targeted a ton. He's still been playing a good amount of snaps, but the, the volume just hasn't been there. He did play 69% of the snaps last week, and personally, I thought without Mike Williams, there would be more targets available for a guy like Gerald Everett, but he only saw two targets last week, which obviously was not what you want to see. At 4,600, I think Everett is kind of similar to Ferguson. He's just like a touchdown or bust play. Between those two tight ends, I think I would prefer Ferguson, but um, you know Everett's in play. He's definitely not. Again, he's another guy that I'm not like in love with on this slate, but I think he's playable at 4,600. There are guys cheaper though that we're going to talk about that I, that I would rather go to um, to save salary. So for cheaper, you have someone like Quentin Johnson at 4,200. Now Quentin Johnson has not had much of a role this season, but his role is expanding without Mike Williams. And last week we did see him play. He did actually play a season high. Uh, 51% of the snaps last week. He's going to operate as the wide receiver three without Mike Williams. Only saw three targets, but Quentin Johnson, I know, I'm pretty sure he's like a big play guy. He's a guy that they can target deep down the field. He's more of a boom bust option, but I think at this price tag, his ownership should be pretty low on this slate because there are guys cheaper that I think are going to project better that we're about to talk about. So I think if you want to go to a guy in tournaments that has big play upside that probably comes in with lower ownership, I think Quentin Johnson is someone you can look to. He's going to be on the field enough to where I think at this price tag, he's in consideration uh, as, a, as a value option. Um, the defenses on this slate, I'm not a big fan of either one. I know defenses actually tend to project better in higher scoring games because 
when it's a higher scoring game, that means more pass attempts, more dropbacks, and that's obviously better for defenses. Defenses are more likely to score points when teams are throwing versus when they're running, because when they're throwing, you can get sacks, you can get fumbles, you can get interceptions, pick sixes. The Cowboys defense has been great this season, but the Chargers offense is you know, pretty good. Herbert's a pretty good quarterback that doesn't really turn the ball over much, doesn't take a ton of sacks. I don't think I'm going to go to either defense on this slate. Defenses have been really good in showdown this season. I know the defenses have been in the optimal lineup a lot this year in showdown. I'm typically not a guy that plays the defenses too often. Um, and on this slate, I don't have a ton of interest in the defenses. If I had to pick one, though, I think I would side with the uh, with the Cowboys defense at 3,800. And I do want to talk about Michael Gallup. I think Michael Gallup's probably going to be one of the popular wide receivers down here, or popular value plays, I should say. He's only 2,800, and while I would never consider Michael Gallup on a main slate, obviously we have just one game to work with tonight, and when we have just one game, someone like Michael Gallup is going to look pretty good, especially at this price tag of 2,800. I mean, 2,800 is really cheap for a wide receiver two. If you look at the playing time this season, Gallup has been the wide receiver two for the Cowboys. He's been playing you know, 70 to 80% of the snaps most weeks. Last week, he led the team with 82% of the snaps played. He's going to be out there running routes. He hasn't been able to earn targets much this season, but the last few weeks, the targets have been going up for Gallup. Seven targets in that game against Arizona, six against New England, five last week against San Francisco. In a good matchup, in a good game environment, in a high total game, yeah, I think Gallup at 2,800 looks like a pretty good value play here. Um, I think he's going to project really well at, for the salary. I think he's going to probably project well in like in cash games. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you see him be very popular in cash game builds. But this price tag is definitely too cheap for a guy that's going to play a large majority of the snaps and is going to be out there running routes. So do have a lot of interest in Gallup for value. And then some of these other cheap value plays we can maybe look to. Again, with uh, with um, with Austin Eckler back, like I don't really have any interest in Isaiah Spiller. Donald Parham has caught... Uh, two or actually three touchdowns this season. He's just a touchdown or bust play at best. You know, the the Chargers are going to involve multiple tight ends, but at most you're probably going to see like, I don't know, 20, 30 snaps for, for Parham. He's just a boom bust, touchdown or bust play. Not a ton of interest in him at 2,200. Uh, Rico Dowdle is just going to back up Tony Pollard. And if this game's competitive, I think you probably see Rico Dowdle get like five, six touches. Rico Dowdo has seen increased opportunity in some of these blowouts, but this doesn't project to be a blowout, so I don't think at 2K I'm really interested in him. Um, Keontae Turpin, or Kevontae Turpin, he's a guy that has big play upside, but he's just not going to touch the ball enough to, I think, he'd be worth his salary. Um, week four against New England, he did have like one carry. I think it was like an end around or something. He had one carry. He got 46 yards on that. Last week he had one catch, and it was a 26-yard touchdown. I'm pretty sure he does return kicks for the Cowboys. So, like, I guess there's a chance he returns a kickoff for a touchdown. You get some points for that. But at tw even at $1,600, I don't really have any interest in Kevontae Turpin. Uh, last week, he only played, I think he played, like, two snaps. He played, yeah, he played two offensive snaps last week. So, not a guy that I'm super interested in. I think that's pretty much it down here. Like, I don't think there's really anyone else that's playable down here. Um, the only other guy I'll mention would be Jalen Talbert. So, Jalen Talbert is the minimum salary, $200. And last week, Jalen Talbert did play 22 snaps. The last two weeks, he's played 34% and 45% of the offensive snaps. So he's been operating as kind of the wide receiver four for the Cowboys. He probably sees maybe a couple targets at best. He's the stone minimum, $200. If you're really trying to build like stars and scrubs lineups, like if a lot of the guys at the top do really well, like if Austin Eckler does really well, if the quarterbacks do really well, if Keenan Allen does really well in this game, if you get like four or five points from Talbert, like that could be good enough at his salary. If you're going to play someone at $200, I think he would be my first click down here. That doesn't mean I have a ton of confidence in him, but of all the $200 plays, I think he's probably the best option. Uh, but that's really it, man. I think we kind of talked about all the playable options on this showdown slate. This is going to be a, a fun one. I'm excited for this game. We do have a Millie Maker on DraftKings, so there's some big tournaments out there. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about this game probably in, an, uh, in another video. I will be making a prize picks video later. So if you guys, again, are not on prize picks, we are sponsored with prize picks. You guys can check them out. Link down below in the description. We'll be talking more about this game in a prize picks video that I'll post later tonight after this video goes up. So if you want to know some props, some player props I like in this game, um, we'll, we'll talk about those in those video, in that video. We'll give them out there. Check that out if you are interested. And if you don't have an account on prize picks, Get signed up. Use promo code NOAA. You will get your first deposit matched up to $100 when you sign up for prize picks uh, with my promo code. But that's all that I got for this Monday night game, guys. Appreciate you watching the video. As always, 
Hope you guys enjoyed. Best of luck on this slate. Hopefully we can all win some money tonight, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.